I was driving to my in-laws yesterday so I could get on the radio with Trisha, and we were having a discussion about human nature and why it is that human, na human nature seems to default all the time to war and to competition and to who can have more and why it is that we always set up things like monarchies or a ruling class that is the one percent or the two the ten percent and then the rest of us over here just kind of struggling to get by or to make something for ourselves we seem to be happy with what we have but it's nowhere near what everybody else has why and as soon as we begin to make traction we the 99 percent well then the one percent kind of shuffles things around, there's kind of a dust up and we're all put back in our place again. And it's kind of crazy. We're seeing this a lot in countries. And I come from a very political family. My grandfather was a legislator in the state of Hawaii. My father was his campaign manager. They were Republicans back in the day when that wasn't really, you know, a terrible thing. Not that it's terrible. I'm not talking politics. We're not doing that. But that's who they were. And so I came up in politics. And they were always very activated by that lower energy of politics and, and typically quite angry. And I just, I don't want to be a part of it anymore. I don't know if it's my age. I'm just not activated by that anymore. Instead, I'm really turned on by the idea of finding a way to make it better just myself. When I get into my car, instead of maybe turning on a show that is low vibration or music that is low vibration, how can I intentionally select music or teaching for myself that feeds my spirit so that when I get out of my car or even while I'm in my car, I'm not damaging people. I'm, my energy is not lowering somebody else's energy. It all starts with us. Why? <laughs> Why can't more people be conscious of this? Why can't more people be serious about this? And I'll tell you why I think it is. There was a study a while ago, and I hate when people do this and they don't cite it, so I'm sorry. I don't know what the study is, but this was years ago, and, and my former sister-in-law told me about it. But I was wigging out about something that had happened way back in the 90s, all crazy and upset about it. And she said, you know what? The reason you are in overwhelm, the reason you are losing your shiznit is because in terms of mapping of the brain, in terms of our actual human capacity in 3D reality, we only have the capacity to care about the rough equivalent of a village. That's how we've been doing it for eons and eons and eons. We really only cared about our village, our people. But now in this internet age, in this age where we're hearing not just about what's going on in our crazy country, but what's going on in everybody else's crazy country and the leaders of those country and nukes, and we're getting shorted out because we don't have the actual physical human gray matter and capacity energetically to care actively about all of these people. And who are we? We're empaths. We're sensitives. We're spiritual people who care. We have heart balls. And we're trying to live in a heart-centered way. It's hard for us not to just shut down and say, peace out. I don't even want to be here. Y'all are crazy. This is a prison planet. What did I do incarnating here? It's because we're plugged in to too many sources of information. It's because we are attempting to take care of everybody when really physically, actually physically, we were only ever meant to care for a tribe or for a village. Now, I'm not saying that spiritually, energetically, we don't have what it takes as a collective to care for one another. We absolutely do, but there are ways to do that. You can't just plug into all of social media and all on YouTube and CNN, get off the news, people. You can't just plug into all the programming, which is called programming for a reason, by the way. They're programming you to believe a certain way and to have a day a certain way energetically. Wake up, let's watch the news. How many of you are on the Today Show just watching the news and getting programmed to have a bummer for the rest of your day? How many of you come home and the first thing you do is turn on the television and you're watching the real wives of wherever? Guilty. Sometimes I do that. I'm just being honest. Sometimes I do that when I'm zoning out, but now less and less these days because it's so freaking negative to watch any kind of reality TV. But how many of you are watching the news as soon as you come home to relax? What? How is that relaxing? We are constantly being programmed and taken away from our natural alignment, which is joy. So what am I talking about? I know I'm going off on tangents. It's all right. We're going to pull this together. So yesterday I'm in the car. My husband is going on because he's a character. He's like, you know what? I just want to assemble 
One million vets of all kinds of countries, not just America, one million vets, mobilized people, and just go to another continent. He said, you know, I think there's only Africa left where we could maybe find a space in Africa, we could call it our own, and let's create a, a new society, a new country with like a real constitution. He's a libertarian. He's from Texas. He's got tattooed on his arm, come and take it. That's who he is. He's like, let's just start over. And I'm like, oh. first of all, that's what they did with America. That's what we tried to do, y'all. And here we are. 200 some odd years later doing the same thing that Rome did, the same thing that Greece did, the same thing that England did. Why? Because it's human nature and we're defaulting to our human nature. And once you get over to your utopian society in Africa or Costa Rica or wherever you want to go, what do you think is going to happen with all those people? They too will default to their human nature unless they learn how to hang out in a higher vibration. Instead of wanting to go somewhere else and be something else, how about we start right where we are in this car thinking about a new Gaia? How about we start thinking about a new life for you and for me? How about we start thinking about what we're going to do when we get out of this car and go into my in-laws home, your parents home, and what are we going to say to them today? How are we going to bless them today? How can we intentionally design and co-create our day so that we can be the change right now? in this moment instead of trying to figure out what's going to happen in the future that's never that's never worked before i told him and i'll tell you and it's not going to work now the only thing that's going to work now is to be the light worker that you've been called to be right now the problem that i'm seeing in some of in some of this group and in the spiritual community generally is we associate light worker with life purpose and we think well Am I a light worker? And if so, does that what's my work supposed to be? Is that my life purpose? How do I do that? No. No. What a light worker is is somebody who is determining and intending for themselves to shine their light. That's it. Get in your car and instead of getting mad and rageful at everybody who presumes to be on your road, rude. Instead of doing that, be love. Be kindness. Let somebody cut in. Just be grace. Be that higher version of yourself that you came into this world already as. That's what light worker is. You go to the coffee shop and you say something nice to somebody. You hold a door open for the little old lady who can't get in or might need some help. You help somebody. You bless somebody. You just be love in the little things. Imagine if all of us as a community of 2,300 people, 400 people, whatever, decided that today, for the rest of this day and tomorrow, that's all we were going to do. We were going to put ourselves second and we were going to look for ways to serve other people. We were going to get out of our own ways with those things that tend to trigger us or cause reaction in us and instead we were just going to be love in whatever way that we could what kind of world would just 2500 of us be able to create don't forget the 100th monkey experiment hearts if you know what the 100th monkey experiment is the 100th monkey experiment i'm going to tell you what it is i know some of you already know but it bears repeating because we often get clicked out of alignment and we need to get clicked back into alignment. The 100th monkey experiment was an experiment that took place, I want to say in Okinawa, Japan, somewhere in Japan, where they observed in a pack of monkeys, I don't know what you call a pack of monkeys, what do you call that? I know you call a pack of crows a murder of crows. And do you know what you call a pack of larks? An exaltation. They're an exaltation of, it's not beautiful, an exaltation of ours. Anyway, I don't know what we call monkeys. But they observed that when, they observed that when one monkey taught itself an innovation of some sort, and I think what it was was washing the sweet potato in the ocean for some reason, and it helped to process the sweet potato in a certain way so that the monkey and all the other monkeys could eat it. When one monkey taught itself this innovation, the other monkeys observed it and began to do it as well. They said, aha, uh -huh, that's a great idea. Let me wash my sweet potato as well. But by the time the 100th monkey 
observed the innovation and also began practicing and doing the innovation, something odd happened. There were other islands near Okinawa or Japan that had other tribes of monkeys. And this innovation, this new technology, which is what it is for monkeys, was somehow transmitted energetically to the other groups of monkeys on other islands that never actually observed the innovation. Somehow, at that same time, around the 100th monkey also participating in the innovation, all the other monkeys everywhere else also began using the same innovation. They all of a sudden just knew how to do it. They all of a sudden knew that this was new technology and they began to do it as well. Why? Well, the theory is that when enough of us, and I'm, I'm talking about people, begin to practice truly a new innovative thought, a new enlightened thought, a new vibration, a new energy, this is then transmitted globally, not just to the communities that are most nearby us, globally. And look at the Lightworkers Lab. How many people do we have here? Again, 2,300 people. We're all over the world. If we all held the intention to just vibrate at that higher rate, to do those things in our lives that caused us to feel love, to be happy, to be peaceful and content, we would necessarily transmit, this is the theory, we would transmit this enlightenment to the rest of the population and they would have an opportunity to avail themselves of it. Would they? Not necessarily, maybe not all the monkeys did it, but they all had access to the new energy. They all had access to the new information. And you see this actually, I think Joseph Campbell taught about this in The Power of Myth. And I'm talking specifically about the Bill Moyers interview that he did with Joseph Campbell that sometimes comes up on PBS. I own it, it's so freaking fantastic. I used to make my child, seven years old, sit there and watch Joseph Campbell the power of myth because it's so powerful. But he talked about how as soon as one society, maybe in Europe, in, in, innovated in a certain way or became maybe an agrarian society, somewhere in the Yucatan or somewhere in the Americas, that society also at around the same time roughly became an agrarian society too. Why? Why did they both innovate in the same way? And this is a massive innovation for the time. Why? They, they can't communicate with one another. They weren't able to back then. It's this 100th monkey effect. I will say that this theory, this effect has been challenged. There's been, art, there's been reports that were written talking about the way that the experiment was conducted. And so you can take what resonates with you and leave the rest. I happen to believe this is how it works. In fact, I believe that all of it is available right now. Enlightenment is available right now. High vibration and the expansion of consciousness is available for us right now. It exists actually, literally, in the fourth dimension. We are in the third dimension, as you know, but we are multidimensional. We have the ability to ride the lightning between this dimension, 3D, and also fourth dimension. And the fourth dimension is a portal dimension. This means that when we're in the fourth dimension, we can pop over like through a wormhole or such into 5D, which is where Christ consciousness is, into 6D, which is where morphogenetic building blocks and temp templatry exist, that's 6D. All the higher beings that live in these higher dimensional energies sprinkle down what it is that they have to offer us and it goes through the dimension that they're in and it ultimately ends up in 4D. It ends up in the astral, if you will. 4D is the space that we can enter into when we meditate, when we're deeply meditating and we feel almost like we're here in this life but we're somewhere else as well. 4D is also where we go when we dream. It is the first, most proximate dimension that we enter into when we die, before we actually go into the light, which is the portal that I'm speaking of. It's also the dimension, kind of like a birthing canal dimension, that we enter into before we are birthed into this incarnation. It's all there though. So when Nikola Tesla, who's trying to bring free energy to the world, and who's telling people who will listen to him that he's talking to aliens, when he's bringing forth this innovation, he's in 4D grabbing it. But anybody can, anybody can grab it. 
Anybody can. Einstein, when he's figuring out and playing with the theory of relativity, he's pulling that down from 4D, and that's coming down from 6D, the beings that are there, the masters. The friends in spirit are sprinkling that down and Einstein is going up to grab it. And so I think a couple of things. I think if we all together begin to envision a new reality for ourselves and then live in it and be that and vibrate at that, we will transmit to the rest of the collective this possibility of being which is higher than where we are now. And we need to do that. The planet needs us to do that. I also think that these innovations, these spiritual technologies are available right now. All we have to do is rise up, reach up, and bring them down into 3D reality. And then practice them. Practice them. And somebody's going to observe you doing that. And then somebody's going to observe the other person doing that. And pretty soon there's 100 light worker monkeys and we're transmitting new technology, a new way of thinking and a new way of being. Well, that's what I told my husband. As you might imagine, a little bit of the glaze of the eyes. He's driving. He's like, okay, <laughs> but he hears me. He absolutely understands and he knows, he knows that I'm right. I think that that's just the way, that's just the direction we all need to go. Just don't worry about all the things that are happening on this planet. Don't get caught up and overwhelmed with all the things that are happening on this planet, in your family, in your community, in your country. Just concern yourself with being in as perfect alignment as you possibly can be in your experience and incarnation. Therefore, put into place in your experience those things that fill you with your high vibration. What is that? Maybe it's a, maybe it's a sunshine. Maybe it's a Dane. Maybe it's earth energy that you can, you can avail yourself of in the form of your cat or your dog or your garden or your walk out in nature. What are those things that bring you joy and light you up? Do those things more and then go walk around the planet. That's what a light worker is. Everybody not just can do that, Everybody should. Hey everybody, I just wanted to end by inviting you to my free online spiritual community called The Lightworkers Lab. If you're interested in finding your spiritual tribe, go to thelightworkerslab.com. Check us out, learn what we're about, and learn how you can join. Or just go to Facebook and search The Lightworkers Lab and ask to join. I also wanted to mention that every couple of months I offer an in-depth or a comprehensive spiritual or metaphysical class. And if you're interested in taking your spirituality and your connection to a whole new level, go Go to crystallandcompton.com slash spiritual hyphen classes. Check out what's coming up and join if you are so inclined. And to everybody, I just want to say that I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. God bless.